the anime begins with a man named Kelvin, who has just woken up in a new world. Because he could not remember his previous life, Kelvin was confused about what was happening to him at this time. At that time, a menu icon appears as in a game in front of him. On the screen, it says welcome to another world. He immediately touched the start button on the screen without hesitation. Suddenly, a female voice appears from the menu and welcomes him to the world of Isekai. The woman said Kelvin is currently reincarnated in a fantasy world full of magic and swords. It turns out that Kelvin lost his memory of his own accord when he was in his previous world. The menu also shows Kelvin's stage and shows he has a fairly high summoner level. Knowing this, Kelvin felt happy and praised himself. He thought that he must have been a great professional gamer back then. The woman suggested he go to a nearby town to register as an adventurer in the local guild. While walking in the middle of the forest, Kelvin began to wonder why the menu always flew after him. It turned out that the female voice from the game menu was the voice of the reincarnation goddess Melvina. Before Kelvin was reincarnated, it turned out that he had made a contract with Melvina to become his subordinate. Whereas before, she had never been a subordinate of anyone because she was a goddess. Arriving at the nearest town, Melvina explained why Kelvin had to be reincarnated in the Isekai world. So in his previous life, Kelvin had died in an accident caused by the carelessness of a god. Feeling guilty, the god asked Melvina for help to give him a new life. In his previous life, Kelvin had seen Melvina's true form. At that time, he fell in love with her beauty, even he expressed his feelings and asked her to come with him. Feeling bored and not getting a new assignment as a reincarnation goddess, Melvina decides to help Kelvin and come with him. Kelvin asked if he could restore his memory again. Melvina explained that he was the one who asked her to erase all of his memories and exchange them with superpower magic abilities. Unknowingly, when in the previous world, Kelvin said he would still love Melvina even though his memory had disappeared. Knowing this, he blushed and covered his face with both hands. After that, Kelvin ran while feeling confused by his behavior in his previous life. But he also thinks that if he can fall in love with Melvina, it means that her face is really beautiful. Kelvin was curious as to whether he could give orders to Melvina now, but she explained that he still needed a huge amount of MP if he wanted to command her, with his current level still unable to do that. Arriving at the guild office, Kelvin met a female receptionist named Anjay. After that, he filled out the registration form to become an adventurer. Melvina told Kelvin to hide his identity as an S-level summoner. According to her, a job as a summoner was still very rare in that world, let alone an S-level summoner like him. If any state leader finds out he is a summoner, he will be their target. After filling out the registration form, Kelvin earned his certification as an adventurer, but he has to start with the lowest rank, which is the F level. To level up, he must complete 10 missions in a row. He asked the registration officer for the task of being a novice adventurer. At that moment, Kelvin was offered three pieces of mission paper by Anjay, with a choice of missions to collect herbs, defeat 30 slime monsters or find a house cat. Melvina suggested Kelvin defeat 30 slime monsters. He accepts her suggestion and registers the mission with Anjay while buying the cheapest wand. After that, Kelvin immediately left and decided to complete his mission to earn money for purchasing food and rent lodging. Long story short, Kelvin found three blue slime monsters relaxing in a forest. He instantly identified the three blue slimes using his magic. It turned out that the way to tame them he had to make the three slimes die without killing them. He decided to attack them without using his magic, but he will only use his physical abilities. After that, Kelvin attacked the slime monster with his very poor physical ability. As a result, the three blue slimes even played with him. For him, slimes are the weakest monsters, but why do they look so strong now? After adapting to the slime's power, Kelvin was finally able to make one of the slimes die and managed to tame it. After that, he made a contract with the monster and named it Clotho. Shortly after, Kelvin ordered Clotho to defeat the remaining slime monsters so he could complete his mission. Clotho explained that Reslime was now used to absorb the power out of weak slimes, so it wasn't a problem for Clotho to kill the weak slimes. Finally, with Clotho's help, Kelvin could easily defeat the remaining slimes. Seeing Clotho's drastically increased strength and speed, Kelvin was surprised. Melvina explained that when a monster is tamed by an S-level summoner, the starting point will increase by 100 times. It turned out to be true that after Kelvin saw Clotho's power on the game icon, Clotho's power had indeed increased 100 times compared to before. Knowing that, Kelvin felt like he was cheating because he could turn a monster as weak as a slime into one as strong as it is now. He also muttered it's only natural that the country's top brass are targeting S-level summoners. After the mission was completed, Kelvin went to the guild office and managed to get the money. He immediately used it to rent lodging. On the way, Kelvin saw an elf slave girl being sold by a man. The elves sold by the merchant belonged to a rare race and had very beautiful faces. But Kelvin gave up his intention when he saw the elf's face that looked so weak from close range. 
Finally, Kelvin arrived at the Oyamura Inn that Anjay had recommended. At the inn, he meets a woman named Claire, the owner and waitress. Kelvin expressed his desire to stay at Oyamura. Hearing that, Claire looked very happy and said that she would cook delicious food for him every day. After that, she gave him the key and showed him the room to be occupied. Arriving in the room, Kelvin immediately lay down while talking with Melvina. Soon, he smelled the delicious food, which made him impatient to taste his first food in the world of Isekai. At the same time, Claire called Kelvin to eat cooked food. The next day, Kelvin begins his new adventure with Clotho and Melvina. They hunt monsters and defeat them to make his level up. In the afternoon, Kelvin improved his hiding skill to hide his identity as an S-level summoner. After that, he returned to the guild office to submit evidence that his mission was a success. Knowing this, Anjay praised him because it was the first time she had seen a novice participant who could level up this fast without forming a group. Actually, Kelvin did not form a group because he was afraid that his identity would be discovered by others. Besides, he already has Clotho to help him, so he doesn't need a group for now. Unknowingly, Kelvin and Anjay's conversation was overheard by the other adventurers. It turned out that they were also surprised to learn that there was a novice adventurer who was able to level up so quickly. They even thought that Kelvin was a palace magician disguised as a novice. But Kelvin doesn't care about other people's comments about him. He even plans to ask Anjay for the next mission so he can level up quickly. Soon, a male adventurer named Cashel arrives, who advises Kelvin to take on a mission to eradicate Black Spirit Knights. In addition, Cashel congratulated him for succeeding in advancing to the E level. After that, Cashel invites Kelvin to join his group to defeat the Black Spirit Knight. Hearing this, the other adventurers secretly commented that Cashel was an arrogant adventurer, even he often bullied the new adventurers. In addition, Anjay tried to prevent Kelvin because, according to her, the mission was too heavy for him, who had just advanced to E-level. Kelvin refused Cashel's offer in a friendly manner because he still didn't need a group. After that, Kelvin tried to identify Cashel's power through his magic power. He saw that Cashel's strength was on par with Clotho's. But what surprised Kelvin was Cashel's title as an assassin, even though his status was just an ordinary swordsman. Shortly after, Kelvin invites Cashel to compete. The winner is the one who can beat the Black Spirit Knight faster. Cashel reminds Kelvin that the Black Spirit Knight is not an enemy that can be fought alone. Even he will fight it with his group. Then Cashel leaves him. It turned out that Cashel didn't really want to invite Kelvin to join his group. He just wanted to trap Kelvin while fighting the Black Spirit Knight. But without realizing it, Kelvin had also planned to trap Cashel later. After leaving the guild office, Cashel met two men in his group. And sure enough, they did mean evil to Kelvin. One of the men asked Cashel to immediately kill Kelvin, but Cashel still asked him to be patient. In addition, Cashel told them that Kelvin challenged them to defeat the Black Spirit Knight, and as seniors, they had to accept the challenge. In the evening, Cashel and his group headed to the Black Spirit Knight's hideout. When they got there, they were surprised to see that the Guardian monsters had all been defeated. Not long after, Kelvin appeared and greeted them all while apologizing for defeating all of the Black Spirit Knights. He also informed them that it seemed the Black Spirit Knight was behind that door. However, one of Cashel's group mocked him and asked why Kelvin was waiting for them to defeat the Black Spirit Knight. He replied that he did not need help from the three of them, even he felt uncomfortable with their presence. Kelvin challenged the three to finish everything right then and there because he already knew they had evil intentions toward him. Hearing this, Cashel wondered why Kelvin wasn't afraid of the three of them and instead challenged them. Even Cashel revealed that the three weren't ordinary adventurers but wanted criminals from the palace. But Kelvin was not afraid. He even challenged them to attack him immediately. Shortly after, one of the men ran to attack Kelvin, who had set a magic trap for him. Kelvin set a trap in the form of quicksand, which made the man's large body suck down. After that, Kelvin attacked them again with his magic power, and even one of them chose to run away. However, Kelvin wouldn't let him go, and he called Clotho to stop him. After appearing, it turns out that Clotho's current form has increased so that its physicality becomes big like a giant and has the title of a predator. According to information from Melvina, the predatory slime type was the monster that had destroyed the Torah kingdom hundreds of years ago. Clotho easily caught the two men at once. Seeing this, Cashel invited Kelvin to fight one-on-one. -on -one. However, when the match started, Cashel could already be defeated by Kelvin. After the fight, the three revealed their goal of killing the rookies. According to them, their group could gain XP faster when killing adventurers than killing monsters. After capturing them all, Kelvin planned to hand the three of them over to the guild office. After the envoy with the three of them finished, Kelvin opened the huge door before him to face the legendary Black Spirit Knight. After the two of them faced off, Kelvin identified the power of the Black Spirit Knight with his magic. Based on the results of his identification, the Black Spirit Knight was a very strong high-level enemy. 
Knowing this, he smiled happily and wanted to make the monster his summon. Kelvin told the monster that he actually wanted to kill him, but now he changed his mind and instead wanted to make a contract with him. Hearing Kelvin's offer, the Black Spirit Knight casually conversed with Kelvin instead of fighting with him. The Black Spirit Knight felt very happy about Kelvin's presence because everyone came there to attack him, but only Kelvin wanted to talk to him first. Apparently, the Black Spirit Knight was once a loyal country commander named Gerard, but somehow, he turned into a monster. Even now, he still can't remember it. Kelvin offered him to be his subordinate and make a contract. But before that, Gerard wants to know Kelvin's strength by fighting to compete. When the match had just started, their attack power looked even. But in the middle of the fight, Gerard experienced pain in his head and began to remember why he had turned into a monster. At that time, Gerard failed to maintain the kingdom's peace and security, which should be his responsibility. Even he had to lose his wife and child for the incident. He wanted to take revenge on those who destroyed him. After remembering a piece of the incident, Gerard shouted to Kelvin. He needs his help for revenge while fighting with Kelvin. Because Kelvin has strong power, he manages to defeat Gerard. The next day, Kelvin arrived at the guild office carrying Gerard's red gem as proof that he had defeated him alone. All the adventurers immediately surrounded him. They were all in awe of his achievements, including Anjay, who instantly gave him a rank increase. Meanwhile, Cashel and his group have been arrested and sentenced to death. On the other hand, Gerard has a contract with Kelvin and is willing to be his subordinate. Currently, Kelvin still has seven slots of monsters left that he can recruit as his subordinates. After that, Kelvin met Leo, the guild's leader. Leo identified Kelvin's strength through his eyes as the same as Kelvin's strength, even he could tell that Kelvin was a summoner. Gerard calmed Kelvin by saying that he couldn't hide his identity forever. Most importantly, he had to have friends who could hide his secret. After hearing this, Kelvin calmed down and told Leo he was a summoner. Kelvin also asked if Leo has the ability to identify, he should know the crimes that have been committed by Cashel's group, but why did he even let it be? Leo explained that Cashel was a foreign aristocrat, so taking care of the case was difficult. He had gathered enough evidence, but Kelvin had caught Cashel first. So Leo found it easier to investigate the case and thank Kelvin for his help. After that, their conversation became more serious, and Leo planned to invite Kelvin to work with him. Previously, Leo had also met knights from another world. They were the holy heroes summoned by the Holy Empire, the Ramis. Hearing that, Melvina said that she had reincarnated the heroes and promised to tell Kelvin later. According to Leo, at that time, the priestess of the Ramis heard rumors about the resurrection of the Demon Lord. This makes several monsters in various parts of the world, including Gerard, become more aggressive and stronger. That was why Leo wanted to cooperate with knights from another world because the king wouldn't be able to protect the entire continent alone. When the Demon Lord has awakened, they all should focus on defeating the Demon Lord together. After hearing this, Kelvin understood the essence of their conversation. Apparently, Leo wants Kelvin to help him defeat the monsters around because the adventurers are currently unable to complete the Level B Up mission. Leo promises to pay and support him, and he will free Kelvin from completing any mission. After learning about Kelvin's real identity, Leo knew that Kelvin didn't want to get involved in politics and power struggles. But this time, he wanted to cooperate with Leo, and they both shook hands. After completing the business activities, Kelvin returned to Oyamura to rest. Arriving there, Claire hugged him because the news of Kelvin's level up had spread quickly. After that, Kelvin went into his room and ate a sandwich from Claire. While eating, Kelvin asked Melvina to tell him about the heroes Leo was referring to. She said that the incident was actually a very long time ago. At that time, the Rami's priest made a summoning ritual, and Melvina looked for people to be reincarnated into Isekai's world. But since it was a long time ago, perhaps their current level was also very high. Hearing this, Kelvin was intrigued, but Melvina felt she didn't want to be involved in that situation anymore. While closing his eyes, Kelvin looked for ways to increase his fighting power to be stronger. Because when fighting against Gerard yesterday, Kelvin almost lost, so he kept thinking that his strength could quickly increase. After that, Kelvin woke up and called Clotho to take his savings. He returned from his room and told Claire to add one more portion to his dinner. After that, Kelvin went out with a happy smile, making Gerard feel curious. Kelvin said that he would buy a female elf slave. Hearing that, Melvin sulked. He explained that he wanted to buy slaves to train and join his group. It turned out that the slave that Kelvin was referring to was the woman he had seen at the slave dealer. He intends to find slaves whose skill points have never been used and have never had a master. According to him, skill points on slaves can only be used with the permission of the master. Therefore, he wants to buy slaves with skill points that are still intact so that he doesn't bother asking permission from the previous master. Suddenly, there was a man who ran because his body was on fire. Apparently, the man also intended to buy the elf slave. It turns out that the slave has a curse, if anyone touches her, they will be burned. 
Kelvin analyzed her curse, which turned out to be from a fire dragon. He looked for a way to get rid of it because he saw that the female elf's skill point was still intact. After that, Kelvin paid the slave until the seller was surprised and reassured him, but he still bought the elf and brought her home. On the way, the elf thanked Kelvin for buying her and said her name was Ethel. Kelvin also introduced himself and said he wanted her to join his group. But Ethel confirmed once again that she was cursed. Besides, she couldn't remember her parents' faces at all, even her past. Hearing this, Kelvin felt sorry for her, then he touched her head and removed her curse using the power of Secret Place. So after he analyzed Ethel's curse, Kelvin looked for a way to remove the curse using his remaining skill points. Ethel burst into tears of joy after knowing her curse had disappeared and was very grateful to him. Arriving at Oyamura, Kelvin asks Claire for help finding clothes for Ethel. Not long after, Ethel appeared wearing new clothes, and Kelvin praised her while having dinner together. After that, Kelvin took Ethel to his room and explained all about him, including introducing her to Gerard, Clotho, and Melvina. Kelvin told Ethel to use her skill points to take double skill points and double her growth rate to quickly level up. The next day, Kelvin went on a hunt with his subordinates to complete his mission to level up. At that time, Ethel's power seemed to have grown stronger, so she could use magic bows and arrows. Moreover, Gerard has great melee attack abilities, making them both very scary for Kelvin's enemies. After that, Kelvin went to the guild office to prove his mission was completed. Anjay explained if he completed one more mission, he could go up to S level. Even Ethel, who just joined, is now at B level and easily defeats her enemies. She thought the tests were just a game because the exams were too easy for her to do. Anjay also told her that Ethel's examiner was a man named Erd, a respected senior adventurer. Afterward, Anjay invited Ethel and Kelvin to eat at a new cafe the next day, and they agreed. The next day, Kelvin came to the appointment. Soon, Anjay and Ethel also came there. Looks like Ethel has prepared her style to eat with Kelvin until her appearance makes him stunned. Arriving at the cafe, they ordered a cake, then they fought each other to feed Kelvin. The men who saw this felt jealous of Kelvin, who could date two beautiful women at once. Feeling embarrassed to be a spectacle, Kelvin invited them to his inn and ate the cake there. Hearing this, the people around them also misunderstood when they heard that Kelvin would bring two women at once to his inn. Not long after, three men came and kicked Kelvin's table. The man named Tabora said that Kelvin's actions were very shameful. It turns out that Tabora is the third prince of Taisan, a military nation from the eastern continent. Tabora asked Kelvin to hand over Anjay and Ethel to him, then he would release him. Hearing that, Kelvin attacked the two of Tabora's guards using his magic power until they were blown away. He also used his ballast magic to interrogate Tabora. It turns out that Tabora heard that there is a new very powerful adventurer in the city of Parth. He intends to arrest that person for making him his subordinate to get his throne. Kelvin said that the person Tabora was referring to was himself, but he didn't want to be his subordinate. After that, Kelvin made him faint. Elsewhere, a priestess named Colette was praying in front of the statue of the goddess Melvina. Looks like she's trying to summon Melvina. After Melvina appeared, she asked how the adventurers were there. It turned out that Colette was the one who had summoned adventurers from another world a few years ago, and the four adventurers seemed to have progressed very well. After that, Melvina orders the four adventurers to go to the western continent because there seems to be a very worrying evil aura starting to appear there, but she also forbids them to come near the city of Parth, where Kelvin is. Colette obeyed Melvina's order and conveyed it to the adventurers. At night in Oyamura, Ethel looks very restless. She was worried that she was less attractive in front of Kelvin, because they had slept in the same room for a while, but he never touched her. Kelvin praised Ethel to calm her down a bit. Hearing his praise, she felt very happy and hugged him. The next day, Melvina came with a status report from yesterday's adventure heroes. Of the four heroes, it seemed that none was stronger than Kelvin. Whereas according to Melvina, soon, the Demon Lord will rise and create chaos. Compared to Kelvin, Ethel, Gerard, and Clotho, the strength of those adventurers was still far away. Kelvin wondered why the four of them couldn't develop well, even though they had been in the Isekai world for more than a year. While the new Kelvin can already make some magic tools himself, even he has given strong armor to Gerard and Ethel. Suddenly, Kelvin is called by Leo to meet him in his room. He informed that there was an appearance of a demon sealed in a dungeon, but the demon's power was still unknown. There's a possibility that Kelvin's mission this time has a level of difficulty equivalent to S-level adventurers. According to Melvina, no matter how weak a demon is, their strength is on par with B-level adventurers. At first, Kelvin didn't want to accept the mission, but Leo kept trying to persuade him by discussing the incident when he and Tabora were involved in an incident. As a result, Kelvin was willing to accept Leo's offer. Arriving at the dungeon in question, Kelvin and his subordinates rushed to where the demon was. But in the dungeon, they didn't find any monsters or demons blocking them. 
A few moments later, they arrived at a room full of skulls and saw the figure of a demonic woman named Sarah, who was bound and weak. Suddenly, a demon man named Victor welcomes their arrival. It turns out that Victor is a demon who has bound Sarah, the daughter of a demon king named Gustav. Victor is Sarah's bodyguard, but he does it to become a demon lord. He has the ability to copy the power of the person he eats. After being a bodyguard for Sarah for so long, it is time for Victor to eat her. Of course, Kelvin wouldn't let that happen. He will face Victor, who is a predatory S-level demon. Kelvin looks very excited to face Victor, the top-class demon. This is the first time Kelvin gets an enemy who has power far above him. As an opening, Victor ordered his men to face Kelvin and Gerard. They immediately went forward to finish off Victor's demons. Seeing the combination of Kelvin and Gerard, Victor was quite amazed. After all his subordinates were defeated by Kelvin and Gerard, Victor hit the floor until it emitted smoke so that it could block their vision. Afterward, Victor made a moving attack from the ground. But it seems Kelvin already knows Victor's strength, so he keeps his guard while looking at the floor. Gerard blocked Victor's attack, while Kelvin faced Victor's extended arm and attacked him. Gerard's attack seemed to be able to hit Victor heavily, but the attack meant nothing to him. Since physical attacks don't work against Victor, Kelvin summons Clotho to engage in battle. Kelvin tries to use his magic power against Victor and manages to tie his hands, but the attack did not last long and was destroyed by Victor. At the same time, Kelvin cast magic power on Gerard's sword and immediately ran toward Victor. On the other hand, Kelvin cast concealment magic on Ethel to attack Victor using her magic arrow from behind. But Victor managed to withstand Ethel's attack until his hand turned to stone. Seeing the opportunity, Gerard slashed Victor's left arm. Feeling pressed, Victor changed his form to his strongest form. After that, Kelvin ordered all his subordinates to attack Victor simultaneously. Eventually, with a barrage of combined attacks, Victor was defeated and bounced off the dungeon walls. As a result, Sarah's body was almost hit by the ruins of the dungeon. But swiftly, Victor immediately saved her. Seeing this, Calvin realized Victor had no intention of eating Sarah. It turned out that he was just lying because he wanted to see Calvin's full power. For hundreds of years, Victor is still Gustav's most loyal subordinate, who is always assigned to train and look after Sarah. He did it with pleasure and full of responsibility. So far, Sarah has been living apart from Gustav because he hid Sarah's whereabouts and put her in a secret castle. He did this so his enemies would not use Sarah to fight him because she was Gustav's weakness. Until one day, the heroes attacked Gustav's castle. Knowing this, Gustav ordered Victor to protect Sarah from the hero's attacks while he faced the heroes. Because of that, Gustav sealed Sarah with a curse that only humans could open. He thought humans were the weakest race, so as long as the one who opened her curse wasn't a hero, then Sarah would be safe. Even after Gustav died, her curse would remain active forever. After Victor finds out Kelvin is a summoner, he asks Kelvin to invite Sarah to join his group. Victor seemed to really trust Kelvin's abilities. Sarah also seems to be aware and can hear their conversation. After her seal is opened, she will open her eyes. Calvin agrees to this, even he offers Victor to be his subordinate, but he feels that his death is near and he just wants to be Gustav's subordinate. After Victor died, Calvin went to the altar where Sarah was to release her curse. After waking up, Sarah, who had heard their conversation earlier, burst into tears. Calvin could only stroke Sarah's head to calm her down. After that, they all came out of the dungeon to meet Erd, who was waiting for them outside. Kelvin carried Sarah, who was already in human form because Gustav had given her a special item that allowed her to transform into a human. After that, Ethel gave an item as proof that they had defeated the top-tier demons in the dungeon. They plan to return to the inn to rest. On the other hand, Gerard has managed to level up because he has won the battle earlier and wants to quickly evolve while increasing his status. After Erd left, Gerard made a revolution until his armor and shield became cooler. He showed it off in front of them all. Seeing Gerard's behavior, Ethel and Clotho laughed at him. Shortly after, Calvin saw that Sarah had woken up and looked calm. He said she didn't have to worry about her disguise and took her to town. Sarah was scared because she had never been out without Victor before. However, Ethel and Gerard tried to persuade her to come with them. Arriving in the city of Parth, Sarah was happy to see the bustle of the city. Calvin was relieved to see her cheerfulness was back again. Finally, Ethel and Gerard accompanied Sarah to look around the city until they were satisfied. Meanwhile, Kelvin went to the guild office to provide information to Leo. Apparently, Kelvin immediately got a rank increase to a level. Arriving at the inn, Kelvin was greeted by the townspeople for his success, including Anjay and some of the guild office staff. It turns out that Claire, Erd's wife, has cooked delicious food for all of them. As a result, they all party all night. When Kelvin woke up, he didn't see Sarah's whereabouts and immediately looked for her. It turned out that Sarah was daydreaming while looking at the sky to remember her togetherness with Victor. 
She remembered that when she was a child, she wanted to go to the beach in the city of humans. At that time, Victor promised to take her to see it. Sarah also promised to continue her life better, as her father and Victor wanted. The next morning, Kelvin distributed the S armor to all his summoners. Apparently, Kelvin and Ethel's armor skills have risen to the highest level limit. Sarah gets an S level weapon and armor. Upon request, Kelvin made the armor and weapon from the remains of Victor's dead body. Receiving the two items, Sarah looked very happy because she felt like Victor was giving her strength. Gerard also got a new sword from Kelvin. After that, Kelvin fell on Clotho's body because he was tired all night trying to forge the weapons. Besides that, Kelvin shouted that he wanted to eat rice because since entering the Isekai world, he had never eaten rice again. Sometime later, they decided to leave the city of Parth to visit the city of Tora. In the city, there is a rumor that a plant that looks like rice exists, so there may be rice like what Kelvin wants. In addition, Sarah seems to really want to go around and see new worlds. Their trip to the city of Tora could also take Sarah for a walk and, at the same time, look for rice for her. On the other hand, Melvina gives the news that she still can't accompany them. She is trying to use her avatar to confront Kelvin head-on. It seems that Melvina is afraid that Kelvin will be snatched by Ethel and Sarah, who is very aggressive toward Kelvin. On the way, Sarah felt someone was watching them. Kelvin also confirmed it. It seemed that he had realized this from the start. Not long after, their horse carriage was stopped by a woman who was then followed by her men. She confessed that they were the notorious Kurokazi bandit group. The coachman of the horse-drawn carriage that Kelvin was riding was frightened because the Kurokazi group should have been slaughtered by an A-level adventurer from Taisan. Kelvin identified their strength using his magic. However, their strength was only at levels 25 to 30. He also told Sarah to face them alone. Sarah immediately jumped from the horse carriage to face them. At first, they underestimated Sarah's strength because the bandits thought the adventurers from Parth only had sea level and below. But apparently, one by one, the bandits can be trounced by Sarah because she has reached level 75, so they are no match for her. When all her troops had been defeated, the woman slowly retreated in fear. As a result, Sarah managed to defeat them all and tie them up. But the woman still threatened them that their boss, already level 70, would take revenge against Kelvin. Hearing this, Kelvin actually felt happy and interrogated her about their boss. Long story short, Kelvin and his group have arrived in the city of Tora. It turns out that the city's appearance is similar to the Japanese city in the past. After playing on the beach for a while, they went to the local guild office to hand over the bandits. The leader of the Tora guild, a woman named Mist, greeted Kelvin in a friendly manner. It turned out that Leo had already told Mist about all of Kelvin's achievements. Kelvin also tells Mist that the boss of the Kurokazi bandits is an A-level adventurer from Tai San who is supposed to exterminate the bandits. Mist was surprised and didn't expect that the person who was supposed to eradicate Kurokazi was actually leading them. The male adventurer named Kristoff was apparently in Tora. According to Mist, they couldn't do anything for now because Kristoff had been considered a hero by the people of Tora. Not to mention if they did something to Kristoff, it could be that Tora and Tysan would be involved in a conflict. Hearing this, Sarah was very upset, but Kelvin explained what Mist meant so they wouldn't be careless when they attacked. Besides that, actually, Kelvin is reluctant to fight people whose level is below him. He wants to fight people who are stronger than him. Suddenly, Kelvin felt the presence of the person he was waiting for, namely the existence of the heroes who had been summoned by Melvina. At that time, Kelvin planned to use them against Kristoff. He and Mist devise a plan for an army of heroes to fight against the Kurokazi bandits. Mist agreed because if the heroes caught the Kurokazi bandit, then there would be no protest from Taisan. Silently, Kelvin had planned something to trap the heroes and capture Kristoff. Inside the headquarters of the Kurokazi bandits, there were many women and children who had been kidnapped to be sold as slaves by them. They even get harassed by the members of the Kurokazi. Luckily, Kelvin and his subordinates arrived on time. On the other hand, Kristoff is seen arguing with his girlfriend. They seem to be afraid that their identity will be revealed soon because their subordinates have been captured by Kelvin. Suddenly, Kelvin enters the room to challenge them. He immediately attacked Kristoff alone while Sarah and Gerard faced off against his two friends. When faced with Kelvin, Kristoff was happy because he could take revenge on him. Hearing that, Kelvin just laughed disdainfully because he realized that Kristoff's strength was still far below him. On the other hand, the heroes, led by a man named Toya, were entering Kurokaz's base. Toya, who could not see the appearance of a single enemy, asked a woman named Satsuna to detect the presence of the enemy. She sensed that many people were gathering at the front of the base. After that, they went to the room that Setsuna was referring to. Upon entering the room, they were confronted by Clotho, who had turned into a giant monster. At first, they were confused about why the slime monster could be in the Kurokazi bandit base. But after seeing several prisoners there, Toya tried to attack Clotho. 
However, the girl who was helped by Kelvin forbade Toya from attacking Clotho. After learning that Toya and his group were heroes, the prisoners immediately felt happy. They told them that there was a group of adventurers who had just rescued them and, at the same time, asked Toya to help the group fight against the many bandits in the base. As a result, Toya and his group ran inside to comply with the prisoners' requests. When they got there, they saw that Kristoff and his friends were already unconscious. However, Toya thought they were the adventurers who had saved the prisoners earlier. But as it turned out, that was Kelvin's real plan. Kelvin plans to trick Toya and his group into being able to fight the heroes by pretending to be Kurokaze's group. The scene then shows Kelvin, who is making fun of four heroes from the human world. It seems they don't realize that what's in front of them is not the villain they are looking for. As a result, a man named Toya Kanzaki and three women named Satsuna Shiga, Miyabi Kuromiya, and Nana Mizuoka prepared to fight Kelvin and his friends. Afterward, Kelvin decided to face them alone. Even he invited them to bet on who lost the battle, then had to obey the order of the winner. However, Toya instead rejected Kelvin's challenge. He felt it was unfair to gang up on his only enemy. Then, Satsuna tells him that Kelvin is not an enemy that can be underestimated. Her statement was justified by Miyabi, who can identify skills. Miyabi felt that Kelvin's strength was greater than the four of them. After hearing his friend's words, Toa agreed to Kelvin's terms. After that, they made preparations before fighting. Shortly after, a woman named Sarah protested because she wanted to fight against the four of them and try her abilities, but Kelvin forbade her and told her to eat the food that Ethel had prepared. Meanwhile, Ethel seems to disagree with his idea and wants to face her enemy alone because she feels his strength is not suitable for direct battles like this. Moreover, Kelvin didn't really understand the skills they had. When he convinced Ethel and said that the fight was deliberately done by him to measure the extent to which his strength developed. Plus, he has a new level S weapon that he made specifically to deal with situations like that time. Finally, their fight began. The four Earth heroes summoned their respective protective spirits, and the spirits functioned to protect them from enemy magic attacks. However, Kelvin is not afraid to attack them repeatedly using his magic. Satsuna was surprised by his strength because magicians usually attack opponents directly, like sword knights. And it turns out that Kelvin aims to use his new weapon to attack Miyabi. The weapon from Victor's body turns out to be able to copy enemy skills. It turned out that Kelvin could copy a maximum of two enemy skills with this weapon, and he had copied Sarah's skills. Toya, who panicked seeing Miyabi's condition, asked his two friends to heal and protect her while he went forward to face Kelvin. Seeing Toya's courage, Kelvin mocked him because his decision was too rash, and he was considered unable to judge the enemy's strength. But Toya looks confident with his sword skills and fights at close range. Even as much as possible, he prevents Kelvin from removing his magic weapons. Kelvin, who can't fight at close range, can even issue his great bare-handed skill. It turned out to be a skill he copied from Sarah. Even Satsuna, who helped Toya, couldn't beat him. Nana was worried about Toya's condition and approached him to heal him, but he refused because he felt he didn't need help from her. Seeing Toya, who feels great, makes Satsuna irritated and slaps him. It seems he doesn't need help from his friends and can solve everything himself. Satsuna wanted to warn Toya that he would be stronger if he did everything together. She didn't want Toya to bear it alone, and Nana and Miyabi agreed with her words. Nana wants them to continue to work together like they used to because that's when they will truly become strong. Finally, thanks to the words of his friends, Toya woke up and got excited again to face Kelvin. After that, they attacked Kelvin with the power of their magic combo, and sure enough, it could overwhelm him, but he still managed to survive. After that, Kelvin gave tips and comments about their skill weaknesses. Toya was surprised by Kelvin, why an enemy would give them constructive suggestions. Then the fight resumed, and the four of them cast their greatest magic skills. As a result, they could catch Kelvin and then make him helpless. Afterward, Sarah teased and offered her help, but he replied casually that this was just the beginning. Shortly after, Kelvin summoned several golem monsters to withstand their attacks. He used the skills he had copied from Miyabi earlier to create new magic on that occasion. He casts a new magic spell to free himself from the four of them. Nana, who realized this, ordered Satsuna to attack him and stop his magic. Unfortunately, Satsuna is too late. It turns out Kelvin has managed to release their magic from his body. Besides that, he was tired of playing with them, and with high speed, he managed to knock them down easily. Then he retaliated against Nana by trapping her back with strong binding magic. Toya, who saw his three friends trounced by Kelvin, was very angry. Soon after, Toya attacked him without thinking, but with just one hit, Kelvin could paralyze him until he fainted. A few moments later, Toya came to his senses. He saw that the slave girl he had met earlier was in Kelvin's lap. Toya, who didn't know that Kelvin was only pretending to be a criminal, tried to save the girl, but instead, he was scolded by her. Shortly after, Kelvin admitted that he and his friends were adventurers. After that, Toya apologized for misunderstanding them. However, Sarah told him not to worry about that because their fight was deliberately done by Kelvin. 
Finally, he realized Kelvin wanted to teach them a lesson and tell them their weaknesses. Kelvin said he didn't mind it, either, as long as Toya and the others were willing to admit their defeat and followed all of his wishes. Hearing that, Toya agreed. But unexpectedly, his first order for them was to take off all their clothes, and the four screamed in surprise. The next day, Kelvin and a woman named Mist were escorting the Kurokazi members to the prison in a horse-drawn carriage. She thanked him for solving the problem. She said that Tora City would investigate the relationship between Kurokazi and the leader of Trison. After that, Kelvin accompanied Toya and his friends to practice. Kelvin was like a mentor to them. Unfortunately, when facing a giant octopus monster, they seemed overwhelmed. Kelvin gave directions to them to deal with it. It turned out that Ethel and Sarah accompanied him. At that time, Sarah wondered why Kelvin wanted to help the four of them to practice. He replied that he only wanted to help the hero Melvina had chosen. Moreover, they came from the same world as him. After Toya and his friends managed to defeat the octopus monster, they ate the lunch that had been prepared by Ethel. Then they discussed the rumors by a woman named Colette, a fortune teller and the one who summoned the four of them to the Isekai world. According to Colette, the dungeon boss's power is increasing due to the demon lord's awakening. Kelvin asked how they would deal with the dungeon boss when they were already overwhelmed with the octopus. Toya replied that they would run away if they met a level S dungeon boss. He was more concerned with his life and friends than having to force himself to fight monsters that were much stronger than him. Even so, Toya will continue to train hard to protect his friends. Hearing that answer, Kelvin smiled. It seemed that this was the answer he had been waiting for because yesterday, Toya was still concerned with his ego and was always rash in making decisions. Kelvin then said that currently, Toya had passed his question test. Shortly after, Kelvin and his friends said goodbye to the four of them. Before parting, he gave them a necklace as a souvenir. They thanked him and went by ship to the other continent. And it turns out that Ethel knows that the necklace is a powerful accessory item. It can increase several attributes and has hidden effects, which will be very useful in combat. Not long after, Sarah came and surprised Kelvin. Apparently, she wanted to say that there was a missed messenger who gave the news that there was an important person who wanted to meet him. Knowing this, Kelvin was excited because he had been waiting for that moment since yesterday. He guessed that the important person that Mist was referring to was the leader of Tora, and it was likely that Kelvin would get a gift from him. Kelvin had planned to ask for rice as his gift to the leader of the Tora because that was the only purpose he had come to the city. After that, Kelvin and his friends go to a palace that he thinks is similar to the kingdom in Japan. According to Gerard, the first king and the hero of Tora came from another world, so there is a possibility that the king of Tora came from Japan and built a palace similar to his original world. Even when they entered the palace, the king's room was installed with tatami. Because Kelvin is Japanese, he knows how to behave and act in front of the king. When the curtain of the throne was lifted, it turned out that the leader of the Tora was a woman named Tsubaki Fujiwara. Her men seem impressed by Sarah's very elegant appearance because Sarah is a noble's daughter and the daughter of a demon king. Shortly after, Queen Tsubaki thanked them and asked them not to be stiff in front of her. She plans to give Kelvin and his friends a large gift, and she will grant whatever their request. Then Kelvin unabashedly answered that he wanted rice from Tora because Tora never sold rice to other regions. Queen Tsubaki was surprised by Kelvin's desire which was considered trivial, even though he could ask her for a position or property. But he replied that they were adventurers who liked the freedom, whereas things like position and wealth only kept them tied to one place. Hearing Kelvin's answer, Queen Tsubaki laughed with satisfaction. She thought Kelvin and his friends were like other heroes who sought excessive rewards. She granted his request, even she would give them rice for free whenever they needed and sent a stock of rice supplies for them. It turned out that Queen Tsubaki had prepared their delicious meal. Kelvin, who found rice in Japanese-style side dishes, was very happy. Without waiting long, he devoured all the food served. Ethel, who saw him so happy, took the initiative to ask the chef about the recipe at the palace. It seems that she wants to be able to cook Japanese specialties for Kelvin while Gerard and Sarah are drinking sake until they are drunk. A few days later, Ethel managed to master all the Japanese-style cuisine. Even Queen Tsubaki seems to like Ethel's cooking. She said Ethel's cooking is much more delicious than the royal chef's. She asks Kelvin for permission to keep Ethel in the palace and offers them all jobs in the palace. Kelvin politely refused her request, but she continued sedating him and asked him to marry her so that she could take care of him every day. Hearing this, he looked at Ethel because he felt an aura wanting to kill him. After that, they all returned to Parth using the magic portal. Arriving at Parth, Kelvin bought a new house because he thought it was too small for all of them to stay in Oyamira. His new house is quite large, like a palace with many rooms. Seeing this, Sarah felt very happy and chose the room that suited her wishes, while Ethel chose the room next to Kelvin's. Meanwhile, Clotho chose to stay in the yard. It seemed that Clotho preferred to be in the wild rather than inside the house. Besides that, Kelvin hired a servant to help Ethel with her homework, and their maid was a mother named Ellie and a daughter named Luca, whom they had saved while in Tora yesterday. At night when they were resting, suddenly Kelvin felt the presence of the person he had been waiting for, namely Melvina. 
He seems to miss her a lot, who has been gone for days. She told him that this time he could see her form, knowing that he called her. And sure enough, Melvina appeared in a very beautiful and elegant form. Even Kelvin felt awkward when he saw her form. Then, she teased him, who looked shy. The next morning, they all had breakfast together. Melvina seemed happy to enjoy Ethel's delicious food. On the other hand, Gerard and Sarah were confused by her presence which they had never seen before. She then introduced herself to them and, at the same time, told them that this was her true form. Afterward, Melvina gave Kelvin a gift for successfully summoning her, which was protective magic. If he uses this magic, he can avoid being fatally injured once a month, so he doesn't have to worry anymore if there is an unexpected attack. And the most important is the second ability, he can summon a hero from another world. Soon after, Melvina was seen fighting against Sarah. The strength of the two of them seemed balanced. Apparently, they were both betting the winner would sleep beside Kelvin. While Kelvin himself was still confused about whether he would call the hero now or not because he was a person summoned from another world, so he didn't want to call someone from that world carelessly. Melvina, who realized Kelvin's confusion, approached him and asked him to talk together. At first, she told him about the existence of a demon king who has two special abilities, the first being able to develop and be able to change the personality of others. The second, the demon lord, is immune to injury. After hearing this, Kelvin was surprised. He asked how to defeat him if the demon king was immune to physical attacks. Melvina replied that only a hero can eliminate the Demon King's special ability, so the existence of heroes is really needed in Isekai. Even so, Kelvin is still hesitant to summon a hero, like Toya and his friends, who were summoned to Isekai without their consent, and in Kelvin's opinion, it's not a good thing. Melvina advised Kelvin to use a reincarnation-type summon, so he would only summon the spirits of the dead from the human world so as not to force the living like Toya and friends. However, according to her, this reincarnated-type summon would require a lot of mana compared to a living human summon and the reincarnation type has its advantages. The heroes to be summoned can choose their appearance, age, and skills according to their wishes, just like what happened with Kelvin. After listening to Melvina's explanation, that night, Kelvin decided to summon a hero using the reincarnation type. He issued his strength to summon the hero. He wanted the strongest hero to come. Without waiting for a long time, a woman named Saki Ryo appeared in front of him. She was very happy after knowing she had been reincarnated in the Isekai world. She cried and hugged him to sleep, and suddenly Kelvin fell asleep. Looks like he has already used a lot of mana to call her. At midnight, Ryo suddenly woke up from her sleep. She still couldn't believe that she was now living in Isekai. She ran into the yard, and not long after, Kelvin appeared to meet her. He apologized to Ryo for being presumptuous and calling her to Isekai without asking for her approval first. But Ryo didn't mind it. She was grateful to be able to live again in a new world. It turned out that Ryo suffered from a very serious illness during her life, so she never went out of the house because she could only lie in bed. Her daily activities are only reading adventure novels, so she feels very happy with her current situation. Kelvin felt relieved when he heard her statement, then he considered Ryo his younger sister. The next morning, Kelvin woke up surrounded by Sarah, Melvina, and Luca asleep on his bed. After the fight between Melvina and Sarah ended in a draw, they decided to sleep together in his room. The next day, Kelvin takes them all to the middle of the forest in the morning to hunt monsters, including Luca, Ellie, and Rian. It turns out that he wants to raise their level, which is still low, but because they hunt in a group, Luca, Ellie, and Rian don't need anything to get their XP. They just sat there while Sarah, Clotho, and Gerard killed the monsters. Hearing that, they felt very happy and hunted the monsters in the forest. And sure enough, Luca, Ellie, and Rian's levels rose very quickly. Suddenly, Ethel felt the air of a savage monster around them, which turned out to be a shadow wolf monster. Kelvin intended to make the monster his pet, who would become Rion's friend. Then he easily made the shadow wolf die and used it and disappeared. After that, Kelvin summoned the scary shadow wolf and turned into a cute wolf. Seeing this, Rion and Luca were very happy. They both hugged and stroked the shadow wolf. Soon after, Ethel felt the presence of other people in their place. It turned out that the ones who came were Erd and his friends. They wanted to complete the adventurer rank up test to advance to level B. His group was very jealous of Kelvin, who was always surrounded by beautiful women, while they were only friends with men with annoying faces. After that, they went from there to hunt monsters, but it turned out that all the monsters in the forest had been slaughtered by Sarah, Gerard, and Clotho. As a result, Erd's group did not get any monsters at all, so Kelvin looked for him to apologize for ruining his group's plans. But Erd didn't mind it. He instead congratulated Kelvin, who had been accepted for the level S adventurer exam. Hearing this, Kelvin was confused. After that, Kelvin and his friends returned to his house to bathe his new pet, Alex. At that time, Kelvin realized that he was tricked by Leo, who gave the level S adventurer exam without telling him first. After bathing, Rian invited Alex to play until the afternoon, and they fell asleep. At night, Kelvin left the room because Sarah felt the presence of mysterious people around her house. It turned out that they are 14 people, 
But when Kelvin checked it, their level was still low, and only their leader had a high level. Kelvin ordered Rian and Alex to confront them. He wants Rian to learn to fight to have experience, then he gives his sword to be used by Rian. It turned out that the intruders were assassin members of the Trison Kingdom. They didn't want Kelvin to hinder Trison's plans to rule the world, so they intended to kill him. However, as soon as the intruders entered Kelvin's yard, Rian and Alex came out to confront them. Although it still looks stiff in using the sword, Rian can defeat them quite easily. Sarah thinks he has an extraordinary level S sword technique qualification, especially when Gerard is his trainer. After Rian managed to defeat all the intruders, Kelvin went to meet the leader of the assassin, and the man realized how terrible Kelvin was. Meanwhile, in Trison City, it seems that Emperor Zal is holding an important meeting with his generals. They seemed worried that the capture of Kristoff yesterday could disrupt their plans to conquer the world. Then one of the generals suggested that they invade other kingdoms and expand their territory using military force. Hearing this, other generals agreed, and some refused. Until finally, they needed one last vote. Unfortunately, the male general named Cliff did not attend the meeting. Finally, Emperor Zal ordered his men to summon Cliff, who was sleeping with many women in his room. The next morning, Kelvin and friends went to an elf village located on the border of Trison Kingdom by horse-drawn carriage. Leo had time to tell him that there were often small conflicts between Trison and its neighboring kingdoms in that border area, not to mention the case of buying and selling elf slaves, which was getting more disturbing. Leo ordered Kelvin to investigate the case. At the same time, Kelvin received an invitation from King Leonhard from the Dress Kingdom to take the Level S Adventurer exam. Knowing that, his friends were surprised because how Kelvin could get an invitation from a king. Not long after, their horse carriage received a sudden attack from the outside. It turned out that the attack came from the elves. Then, Calvin showed the official letter from King Leonhard to them and introduced himself. After hearing this, the male elf leader named Neeraz appears because he thinks he did the wrong thing to Calvin. Suddenly, Calvin is shocked when he sees Ethel and calls Neeraz by the name Rumiel. After that, they went to Neeraz's house to talk. Calvin seemed curious about the facts about Ethel and Neeraz knowing each other, because she had lost her memory from the start as a slave. Shortly after, Neeraz began to tell the story. Twenty years ago, the elf village was attacked by a very cruel fire dragon king. The dragon misunderstood and thought that if an elf had insulted him. Then, he intended to destroy the elf kingdom and destroy them all. But one elf came forward to stop the dragon, namely Rumiel. The dragon asked her to be his wife, and he promised to forget all his grudges. Rumiel then volunteered to be taken away and married by the fire dragon king for the safety of her village. But several years later, they found her body in the middle of the forest, and no one knew what had happened to her. Calvin and the others thought that Rumiel was Ethel's mother because they were very similar physically. But Melvina denies this because Ethel is a half-human elf, which means her father should be a human, not a dragon. But it seems that Ethel doesn't have a problem with that because she already feels that she has a new family that can accept her as she is, namely Calvin and his friends. Ethel said that she had treated them like her own siblings. Hearing that statement, Sarah and Rion burst into tears while hugging her. After that, Calvin discussed his mission. So the elf village was attacked by monsters three times soon, and many of its citizens were kidnapped. Even though Neeraz herself had covered a barrier to keep the monsters from entering the village, that didn't seem to have any effect. Kelvin offered to help them set up a barrier and a trap for the monsters. Neeraz was very happy to hear his offer and agreed. A few days later, not far from the elf village, there was a group of monsters along with several military troops from the Trison Kingdom. It turned out that they were the masterminds of the attack on the elf village. Kelvin and Ethel, who had been waiting for their arrival, attacked the troops from a distance, while the elf village itself had been strengthened by Kelvin. He told Melvina to create a fog barrier so that it could not be seen from the outside, and the village dividing wall had been strengthened. Meanwhile, Gerard is tasked with guarding the gate, and the attacking team is filled by Melvina, Sarah, Rion, and Alex. Not long after, they went on a rampage without waiting long and destroyed the enemy troops. Finally, the desperate enemy commander had to take out their aces by summoning a giant level S monster. After seeing the monster, Melvina ordered Rion and Alex to face the monster because she wanted to see the progress of Rio, who had been diligently training with Kelvin and the others. Knowing that, Rion was excited to face the monster, but her sword shattered into pieces when she attacked the monster. It looks like the monster's skin is very hard. Moreover, the blow is very strong. If she is hit, she can die instantly. It seems that Rion still hasn't given up. She takes out three swords at once to attack the monster again. Two swords are used by her, and one sword is used by Alex. With a combo attack from them, she managed to injure the monster using her electric sword move. But before the monster fell, the commander told him to change shape, and instantly the monster turned into a giant scary fire king. It seems Melvina and Kelvin are not worried about that at all. They believe that Rion can defeat the monster. And sure enough, with one ultimate attack, she could annihilate the monster easily. She was very happy and hugged Melvina. Meanwhile, General Cliff appears at Ethel and Calvin's place and suddenly attacks them. Calvin knows that Cliff is not an ordinary person and is very strong. 
However, Cliff is attracted to Ethel's beauty and asks her to become his slave. Cliff uses his eye-binding move to affect Ethel, but his move is blocked by Kelvin. Before starting the fight, Kelvin first identified Cliff's strength. He was quite surprised after knowing Cliff's level and status. It turns out that Cliff is one of the people who reincarnated from another world to Isekai, just like him. Shortly after, Kelvin issued his four magic spears when their fight started to attack Cliff. But he could withstand Kelvin's attack using his strong protective Kekai, so the fight was fierce. He attacked Kelvin continuously. He didn't even care if his attacks hit his troops. Seeing that, Kelvin was disgusted by his behavior until they clashed in the air. Kelvin managed to injure Cliff's face even though he had to let his magic spear break. Cliff was very angry if his handsome face was injured. He issued his strongest stance to defeat Kelvin. Cliff issued his Kekai a very large storm, thus making everything around him shattered. Then, Kelvin took out his new level S spear and slashed it at Cliff with full power. As a result, the attack managed to make Cliff seriously injured, even his leg was severed. At that moment, Cliff cried and begged Kelvin for forgiveness, but he didn't care and still intended to kill Cliff. Not long after, one of Trison's generals appeared and helped Cliff. They both left Kelvin's presence. At the same time, Ethel and Gerard informed the villagers that they were all safe now. After that, Kelvin and the others came to follow them. They held a massive party to celebrate Kelvin's victory. In the Trison Kingdom, Cliff is seen who has been healed of his wounds. But apparently, he was tortured by his friends and used as experimental material. It seemed they wanted to research the bodies of people reincarnated from other worlds. Meanwhile, Kelvin and his friends, who had finished their party in Elf's village, were suddenly approached by an Elf's daughter, who hugged him. At first, he thought the girl just wanted to say thank you, but it turned out that the girl was King Leonhard from a disguised dress and changed shape to investigate and assess him. King Leonhard told Kelvin if they all pass the Level S exam, then Kelvin will be invited to the official Level S promotion ceremony. There will be a simulated battle between Level S adventurers, and Kelvin is asked to join the fight. Hearing this, Kelvin laughed happily because he was a battle maniac, especially when facing enemies stronger than himself. Without waiting long, they headed to Dress City to participate in the ceremony and fight against other strong people. The moral that can be learned from this anime is that when doing teamwork, we must prioritize their safety, unlike Cliff, who only releases his attacks in anger without caring about his team's safety.